Acro-eating flatworms, red bugs, and any other critters can be a real drag if they get into your system. So in this video, I'm going to take you through my quarantine process for SPS. So step one when I bring in new SPS frags is I will do a visual inspection and I get a little help. Now in years past I've used this magnifying glass. It's adequate, but you're not going to see the complete picture. So I've stepped it up a notch and picked up one of these uh, microscopes. It's a pretty high powered microscope, but it's great because I can really zoom in, put the frags underneath the glass, so to speak, and you can just see pretty much everything that is on those frags, including eggs. So once I do that visual inspection and really zoom in there, see what I have, you know, whether I have any pests that I spot in the microscope or not, I will dip everything. So I'll use this Bayer Complete Insect Killer and I'll put a link in the video description below in terms of the, um, the dosage that I use for the bear and the amount of time that I dip. So, you know, whether or not I see any pests under that microscope, everything does get dipped. And then once that is all done, I move on to the quarantine tank. So here is my SPS quarantine tank. It's a 20 gallon tank and it's a real simple setup. I've got this Mitra's LX7204 LED light for the lighting. I've got a simple hang in the back filter and I've got a couple of um, filter sponges in here. So I actually had put those in my 187 gallon system in terms of the sump to help the bacteria colonize those sponges before I started this um, quarantine tank up. So those, um, those sponges were, were ready to, to rock and roll. I also had a little extra live rock, some Haitian live rock. One, one little piece I did pull out of my 187 gallon tank and I had a couple other pieces that were in a Rubbermaid that I pulled out. So between the sponges and the uh, live rock, I think I've got a pretty decent biological bed going on in this tank. In terms of circulation, I've got the gyro pump going right here. Got a simple frag rack when I got some frags on there already. I'm just gonna keep these frags in this quarantine tank just to kind of have some coral in the tank at all times. I wanna keep this running um, constantly. I've got a 75 watt heater in the back terms of maintenance, what I do is I do 50% water changes. So I will drain out 10 gallons of water from this quarantine tank and I will replace it with 10 gallons of water from my established 187 gallon tank. So I have a pump in the uh, dream box for that tank, which is right over here. So I just turn a couple of um, valves and that will pump the water through these PVC pipes, down the way, out into this vinyl tubing. So what all I do is uh, when I get the pump going from the dream box to pump it out, I just stick that tube right in the tank and refill the tank. So it's a real easy water change to do and it probably takes me five minutes in terms of maintenance while I'm doing maintenance on my 187 gallon tank, not a big deal. But I highly recommend setting up a quarantine tank like this. It's, you know, except for the light, <clears throat> there's not a lot of expense, not a lot of money that I shelled out to set this tank up. And really what, what I do is after I do the dip of the corals, they go into this tank for 30 days. And I just look at the corals up closely, observe them just to make sure they've got some polyp extension. I don't see any other signs of pests and yeah just to make sure that they're generally healthy during those 30 days and once that 30-day period is over i pull out the frags that i plan to put into one of my display tanks and i dip them again in the uh, the bear and before that i will also put them under the microscope just to make sure that no pests did make their way through the uh, the 30-day quarantine period so i'm just being very very extra careful i do think it's very important to have a, a quarantine tank set up for me because SPS, you know, those are the, um, the types of corals that uh, mean so much to me and I have a big collection of them. So I just, I don't want to have 
any acro weeding flatworms, red bugs, or any other pests for that matter getting into one of my tanks. Anyway, that's the skinny on my quarantining process. Well, that will do it for this video. I will put links in the video description below for the equipment I use for this setup. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I will put additional links to Marine Depot and Reef Bum in the video description below. See you next time.